my talk will uh, go to two parts actually. In the first part, we will we will discuss the measures of non-compactness, and in the second part, we will discuss the models of non-semi-compact convexity, uh, which is first defined. Uh, in this talk, in the first part, uh, we develop the Cornerstone theorem uh, given by the factors and uh, and at this at this paper, uh, they, uh, the theorem states that for a Banach lattice E with order continuous, continuous norm, if D is a PL compact subset, then chi of D will be equal to uh, rho of D by uh, and by by showing that if a Banach lattice F has the positive sure property, then rho of D will be equal to the uh, weak uh, measure of non-compactness of D for any norm-bounded subset D of F. Here, chi rho and uh, w are the half sort measure of non-compactness, the measure of non-semi-compactness, which is introduced in the paper above, and the measure of weak non-compactness. Uh, secondly, we introduce the notion of the modulus of non-semi-compact convexity in band lattices, defined with the help of the measure of non-semi-compactness uh, non in band lattices. And then we will extend the results Obtain, obtained by Banas by showing that the modulus of non-semi-compact convexity is continuous and has, has some extra properties in reflexive Banach lattices. Uh, throughout the talk, the letter X denotes an infinite dimensional Banach space, while the letter E, capital E, denotes an infinite dimensional Banach lattice. Uh, also, the B of XR and S of XR will denote the ball and sphere centered at X with radius R. Uh, for brevity, we will write B sub X and S sub X instead of the unit ball, actually, and unit sphere. If omega is a subset of X, then by uh, B of omega, omega R will denote the ball centered at omega with radius r. In other words, the r neighborhood of omega, which, will, which is defined by the union of all balls B of xr. And uh, we already know that the B of omega r can be written, can be written as omega plus r times bx. The closure of the norm closure, the weak closure, the convex hull, and the distance from a point to, to the set will be denoted as usual. And finally, we shall denote the measure of non-compactness as for brevity M and C. In this section, we refer to the following two uh, books for details and proofs about uh, measure of non-compactness. The first one is a Russian group, Ahmero, uh, Kamensky, etc. And the second book is Banas and Goebbels' book, Measure of Non-Compactness in Banas Spaces. Now, let me start first the Kuratowski measure of non-compactness. It is actually uh, the, small, the smallest uh, uh, diameter, actually, that allows to cover omega with uh, finite, finite number of sets of diameters smaller than delta. In other words, in other words, uh, we can re-express the Kratowski measure of non-compactness as in form of delta, where uh, the, the omega uh, is written, uh, finite union of the sets at which the sets has diameter less than Delta. The diameter is, uh, is defined usual, actually, as usual. Sorry. A Hausdorff measure of non compactness of a norm bounded subset omega in X was first given by uh, Goldberg, Goldstein, and Marcus in 1957. Uh, and it is defined by 
the infimum, the smallest actually radius that allows to cover omega with finitely uh, many balls actually. These two measures of non-compactness are commonly used. These associate numbers to sets in such a way that compact sets all get the measure zero. And the other sets get measures that are bigger according to how far they are removed from compactness. More specifically, the underlying idea for chi is the following. A bounded subset omega can be covered by a single ball of some radius and sometimes several balls of a uh, smaller radius can also cover omega. And in fact, actually, uh, a compact set can be covered by finitely many balls of arbitrary small radius because it is, you know, uh, totally bounded. So the smallest radius that allows to cover omega with finitely many balls is exactly uh, chi of omega. There are several examples, actually, uh, for the Hausdorff uh, measure of non-compactness. For instance, uh, in the spaces LP and C0, uh, it can be computed by using this formulation. Another example for C of AD, uh, the chi of omega Hausdorff measure of non-compactness can be co uh, computed by this formulation. There are also common properties of alpha and chi. For uh, let C be alpha or chi, and the first uh, property is the regularity. In other words, the C of omega is zero if and only if omega is relatively compact. And there are other uh, properties, common properties, non-singularity, monoton monotonicity, al algebraic semi-additivity, Lipschitz unity, Continuity, semi-homogeneity, invariance under convex hull, invariance under translations, invariance under closure, and finally, semi-additivity. There are more properties. For instance, uh, what about the uh, Grotowski measure of non-compactness of the ball centered at X with radius R or sphere is 2R. For Hausdorff, it is R. And actually, the alpha and chi are equivalent by using this inequality in C. Also, the chi of B of omega R can be written as chi of omega plus R. On the other hand, if you look at the remark, we don't know if the equality alpha of B of omega R is written as alpha of omega plus 2r. However, we present the following example to show that the equality holds in some case. For instance, uh, alpha of r neighborhood of uh, finite union of balls is actually 2r plus alpha of finite union of balls, okay? But this is just an example. But in general, we, uh, uh, we don't know whether the equality is satisfied or not. Another measure of, uh, another kind of measure of non-compactness is the measure of weak non-compactness, which is defined by de Blasi in 1977 as follows, actually. The smallest radius that allows to cover omega with a ball centered at a weakly compact set. This is interesting. Actually, the measure of weak compactness is at, again, measure of non-compactness in the sense of the general definition provided X is endowed with a weak topology. There are also properties of omega, usually, uh, the regularity is satisfied for relatively weakly compact. In other words, omega of uh, uh, W of omega is zero if and only if omega is relatively weakly compact. Uh, at the same, almost same, uh, all, almost similar actually, 
uh, of the uh, properties of alpha and chi. De Blasi proved in that paper that if X is reflexive, then W of BX unit ball is zero. If it is not reflexive, then the weak measure of non-compactness of the unit ball is one. And there is the there uh, there is this inequality is actually omega is less than or equal to chi and it is also less than or equal to alpha. For weak measure of uh, measure of weak non-compactness, we have this equality. This is important. Omega. It is also uh, proved uh, by the, the Blasi that omega of uh, W of omega plus R uh, times B X is equal to W of omega plus R times W B X. Actually, we have two situations for. Uh, uh, w B X, it is one or zero, just depending on, on the reflexivity or not. Uh, what about the measure of non semi semicompactness? It is directly related to the theory of banach lattices, actually. So we may suggest the following four books for details and proofs in this uh, section on banach lattice. Uh, this is uh, the first book is the very uh, important book for our theory of positive operators. Uh, another book, Luxembourg and Zahnen's book, Reese Spaces 1, Mayer, Niebeck's book, Banach Lattices, and Zahnen's book, Reese Spaces 2, actually, in the sequence. Uh, please allow me uh, to introduce some uh, basic some preliminaries for Banach Lattice theory. Uh, a non empty set M with a relation less than or equal to is said to be an order set if satisfies the three conditions. We know uh, actually if A is a subset of order set, then the element X from M is called an upper bound of A if Y is less than or equal to X for all Y from A and analogous for uh, lower bound, of course. And we, we call a set is uh, as bounded from uh, order bounded if uh, a set, if the set A is bounded from above and from below. And M is said to be order complete or sigma order complete if every non-empty subset, respectively sequence, or sigma means sequence of n, which is bounded from above, has a supra. Uh, let x y is in the uh, is in m with x less than or equal to y. The order interval between x and y is denoted by uh, constant of the uh, the element z, where the z is between x and y. And a subset A is order bounded if and only if it is contained in some order interval. A real vector space E, which is ordered by some order relation, is called a vector lattice. Sometimes they say real space. If any x, y have a least up, have a supremum and infimum, and satisfy the following two conditions. First, if x equal, uh, less than or equal to y, then x plus z is less than or equal to y plus z. And in the second condition, if x is positive, then for all positive t uh, coefficient, uh, the tx is also positive. We call this order set as re space. Let e be a vector lattice or re space. We denote by e plus just consisting of the positive elements. We call it as positive cone of E. The positive part of an element is the supremum of X and zero and negative part of an element is the supremum of minus X zero and absolute value of X is the supremum of X and minus X. And we also say two elements are lattice disjoint or orthogonal if uh, the infimum of the positive part of them is zero. And the norm 
on a vector lattice E is called lattice norm if we have this implication. And the Banach lattice is a real Banach space, E and dot width and ordering such that this set is a vector lattice and the norm on E is a lattice norm. Uh, net in a vector lattice said to be decreasing whenever uh, alpha greater than beta implies x alpha less than or equal to x beta and analogous for increasing. The norm of a Banach lattice is called order continuous if every monotone order bounded sequence is convergent. And we denote the order continued norm as order con OCN. For instance, a Banach lattice E has order continuous norm if and only if every order interval of E is weakly compact. Every reflexive Banach lattice has order continuous norm. For instance, uh, the capital LP has order continuous norm if and only if P is finite. So we can say that the capital L infinity has no order continuous norm. The Banach space dual E prime of a Banach lattice E is a Banach lattice with respect to the ordering defined by F positive if and only if F of X is positive for all positive X. And the following result is a consequence of the Hambanach theorem actually. X is positive if and only if for all F from the dual positive, uh, F of X is positive. For any positive phi from the dual, uh, we define the re semi norm P phi on E by P phi of F is the product of absolute value of F and phi. Furthermore, for F, uh, from, from E and epsilon positive, we denote the ball of centered at F with radius epsilon is defined by, uh, consists of uh, the elements G such that the P phi of F minus G is less than or equal to epsilon. And the set is called PL compact. If for every, positive phi from the dual and for every epsilon, there exist finite numbers of element F1, blah, blah, Fn, such that these uh, covered by the ball, actually the uh, B phi, B phi ball actually, centered at Fj with radius epsilon. Uh, we, uh, it is defined in the actually Dots and Framlin's uh, paper uh, and in Zane's book, uh, we can see that, we can observe that this PL compact, if and only if this P phi pre-compact for every phi, positive phi from the dual. From the Zane's book again, uh, the subset D of a Banach lattice E is called an almost order bounded if for any given epsilon, there exists an order interval PQ in E, such that every X can be, uh, can be written as X1 plus X2. The X1 is coming from the interval and X2 is coming from the ball centered at the origin with radius epsilon. In other words, D is included uh, in, in uh, the interval plus epsilon times BE, unit ball. In this case, there exists, of course, a symmetric order interval minus UU such that D is included uh, in, uh, my, in uh, interval order interval minus UU plus epsilon times the unit ball. And from the, from the same book, we can see that we can have a proposition that says that uh, a, a subset is almost order bounded if and only if we have the following property. For all epsilon, there exists positive u such that for all x, uh, the norm of the positive part of x minus u is less than epsilon. And we have a remark. It says that a set, a subset is order bounded 
implies almost order bounded, implies norm bounded. And the vice versa is not true, of course, for each case. Uh, in, in Zion's book, an order bounded operator from a banach lattice into another one is called semi-compact. If it maps norm bounded cells into almost order bounded cells. Keeping in mind the similarity between almost order bounded cells and relatively compact sets, we call almost order bounded sets simply semi compact. Uh, we, uh, you, can, you can see the description from the paper of Schaap and Wolf, actually. Now we are ready to give the uh, results of the Pachter and Schaap's result. And firstly, they defined uh, in 1988 the measure of non semi compactness of a, of, of a set, norm bounded set D as follows the inform of delta such that there exists positive epsilon, such that the positive part of, in the norm, positive part of absolute value uh, of x minus u is less than or equal to delta for all x. But from the pers uh, preceding pro proposition, from this proposition, We can re express the measure of non semi compactness as follows. The smallest number delta, such that D is placed, uh, placed in the uh, order interval plus delta times unit ball. Uh, in the same paper, the factor and Chef's paper. Uh, there are some properties, similar properties of rho, actually. Uh, just regularity, of course, it will be the different. Uh, the rho of D is zero if and only if D is semi-compact. And there are also properties algebraic semi-additivity, semi-homogeneity, monotonicity, invariance under closure. And this is important. Rho of D is less than or equal, equal to chi of D. We note that if uh, in, the, in the same paper they explain if rho of B unit ball is less than one, then the rho of B unit ball is zero. Uh, I skip the details. So we have the situation rho of the unit ball is either zero or one. And they proved a very important theorem that uh, if, uh, let, if D, the subset D uh, is PL compact, where the Banach lattice having order continuous norm, then they prove that uh, the equality, chi of D is equal to rho of D. Now, remember that Alpha of the unit ball was two. Al uh, chi of unit ball is was one. What about the uh, omega? Uh, if x is reflexive, then it is zero. If non-reflexive, it is one. What about the row of unit ball is either zero or one? Uh, we don't know, of course, but just uh, I put the uh, relation here. Alpha of B of dr is equal to alpha of D plus two R chi of b of dr is equal to chi of d plus r, omega of b of dr is equal to omega of d plus r times omega of bx. And we have this situation, uh, inequality order. Uh, we first, we present the, uh, the property for rho actually, and we prove that rho of b of dr satisfies this, this equality. Skip the proof. Okay. There is another uh, definition. Uh, about, you know, everybody knows a Banach space has the sure property if every weak convergent sequence is norm convergent. And very briefly, we denote x belongs to SP whenever x has the sure property. 
And the notion this xn goes to zero in weekly will denote this a sequence xn weekly converts to zero. A Banach lattice has the positive Schur property if every weekly null sequence, null sequence with positive terms with is normal. And briefly, we denote uh, that E belongs to PSP whenever E has the positive Schur property. Uh, there is a remark here. Please skip the one and two, just focus on the number three and four. If E has sure property, then it has positive sure property. For instance, L1 has sure property, small l1, and so L, uh, small l1 has positive sure property. But the converse is not true always because the capital L1 has positive sure property, but Capital L1 has not true property. Uh, the proof is, uh, is placed in the Zanans book, Read Spaces 2. Okay, there is a problem, uh, there's a question here. If you look at uh, the properties, if you remember the relation between rho, omega, chi, and alpha, we have no relation between rho and omega. We don't know is there there is a relation or not for rho and omega. Okay. Let us discuss the situation. Actually, the inequalities omega less than or equal to rho or rho less than or equal to omega may not always be correct because if e is L2, then uh, w of unit ball, which is zero, is less strictly less than uh, rho of unit ball, which is one. Indeed, since L2 is reflexive, then you remember the property uh, omega of the unit ball is zero. On the other hand, since the unit ball of L2 is not almost order bounded, uh, this is from the Zanans book, it follows that the rho of B is non-zero, and so that it is one. That's, that's why in this example, omega is strictly less than rho. On the other hand, if you consider C of AB, then rho of unit ball is zero, which is strictly less than uh, omega of unit ball, which is one. Indeed, since C of B is not reflexive, omega of the unit ball is one. On the other hand, we already know that the order interval minus one, one, which is the unit ball of C of B is almost order bounded. It, so it follows that rho of B is, rho of uh, unit ball is zero. And that's why, okay, the, the one function of course denotes the constant function for C of AB. And that's why the other situation uh, holds. And that's why uh, sometimes, may not be always correct, but there can be equality actually, for instance, for E equals to L1, small L1. Indeed, since L1 is not reflexive, then omega of the unit ball is one. On the other hand, okay, just skip and just look at the theorem. We present a new theorem actually, it says that if let D be a norm bounded subset, any norm bounded subset of Banach lattice, if E has positive Schur property, then rho of D is equal to omega of D. By using this theorem, by using this theorem, you obtain the equality, which is equal to one. I skip the proof. Now uh, we are ready uh, to go inside <coughs> uh, the next part, actually. Uh, let me explain the modules of non-semi-compact convexity. But first, uh, let me explain the 
uh, some classical models of convexity or non-compact convexity. But so what is the goal for this part? The classical models of convexity introduced in Clarkson's paper in 1936 to define uniformly convex spaces is at the origin of a great number of modeling defined since then Alonso and Ulan's conference paper in 1988. Indeed, there are a lot of quantitative descriptions of geometrical properties of Banach spaces. The most common way for creating these descriptions is to define a real function, a modulus, depending on the Banach space under consideration. And from this, a suitable constant or coefficient closely related with this function. The modeling and or the constants are attempts in order to get a better understanding about the fact, the shape of the unit ball of a space. One might well ask, are there too many modules for these purposes? Yes, maybe. In this part, this is because many of these models involve very difficult computations and often their intricate links between them. Moreover, the, moreover it is not unusual to find some model defined in different way depending on the preferences. So the aim of this, of this part is to give the models of non-semi-compact convexity for Banach lattices with some properties. Okay, let us remember the classical models of convexity given by uh, Clarkson in 1936 as follows. This is the function delta x from uh, the closed interval 0 to, to 0 1, which is given by delta x of epsilon, which is the infimum of one minus norm of x plus y over two, such that the x, y is from the unit ball, but they are different. The characteristic or coefficient of convexity, which is defined by Goebel in 1970, that epsilon zero x is the supremum of epsilon, where the modulus of convexity is zero. And uh, in Goebel's paper, uh, he uh, defined the uniform convexity if the characteristic is zero. In other words, can be explained in this way. For all epsilon, so, uh, there exists delta such that for all x, y from the unit ball, if x plus no, in the no, in norm x plus y over two is less than one minus delta implies uh, norm of x minus y is greater than or equal to epsilon. This is the Clarkson's definition. Modulus of convexity. But in uh, the paper of Goebel and Sekorsky in 1984, the modulus of non-compact convexity of X with respect to the Kuratowski is defined as a function delta alpha, delta alpha from zero to, to zero one defined by the infimum of one minus distance of zero A uh, such that the A is the convex set in the unit ball and the Kuratowski of A is greater than or equal to epsilon. It measures the rodentity of the unit ball in similar way as the classical Clarkson's models of convexity, but it neglects to notice flat compact spots laying close to the units, unit sphere. Uh, in this paper, they proved that delta alpha is non-decreasing for any X, any space actually, the modulus of convexity is less than or equal to the modulus of non-compact convexity with respect to alpha. And the coefficient of non-compact convexity is defined as the uh, epsilon alpha, defined as the supremum of epsilon, where uh, the, uh, the modulus of non-compact convexity is zero. And in that paper, they called uh, a set, 
a space as delta alpha uniformly convex, if the coefficient is zero. And uh, they, they put the relation between epsilon alpha and epsilon zero as follows. And Banas in 19, three years later, 1987, uh, defined a new, uh, actually in, in sequence similar definition by using chi as the modulus of non-compact convexity of x with respect to chi, which is the function delta chi from zero one to zero one, which is defined by uh, exactly the similar way, actually. Just uh, replace alpha with chi. And in that paper, Banas proved the non-decreasing case for delta chi, the inequalities, and defined delta chi uniformly convex if the characteristic with respect to chi is zero. And uh, they, they proved this in a, inequalities actually. We define the modulus of non semi compact convexity of E, the Banach lattice, with respect to rho measure of non semi compactness, as follows. Again, uh, the, the, uh, the, the definitely we, we put this, the same expression for delta chi just by replacing chi with rho, actually. But there is a problem. Okay, the same, uh, we, have, we have the same actual properties, delta rho is non-decreasing. For any x, we have uh, delta x less than or equal to delta alpha, less than or equal to delta chi, which is less than or equal to delta rho for all epsilon from zero one, because we have this uh, relations. And the coefficient of non semi compact convexity is defined as epsilon rho, which is the supremum of epsilon, where uh, the modulus of non semi compact convexity is zero. And we call uh, a banal lattice as delta rho uniformly convex if epsilon rho is zero, the coefficient is zero, and we have this relations. Uh, we prove that the function delta rho is continuous. This is important and uh, in the proof of the theorem, we use actually this important proposition. And uh, as, a, as a special case, the case of reflexive Banach lattice, if E is a reflexive Banach lattice, then we have sub homogeneity uh, for delta rho for any k epsilon. Okay, uh, what about the, uh, the, the rest actually? In the rest, we are now studying on the uh, non-expansive uh, operators uh, to find whether uh, for some special uh, Banach lattice, for instance, AM space with order unit uh, having uh, fixed point property or not. Uh, we don't know the results right now, but we are studying on that right now. Okay, so thank you for your.